This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley quality Christian programming for more than 40 years. Hello and thanks for joining us for Good News in the Valley, your local Christian news magazine. Now first you'll hear from the executive director of Camp Hope as he visits with a mom who will be sharing about her son's plight. Next we'll highlight some of the egg hunts for kids and families that are happening this Easter season. Then you'll be blessed with an Easter video. Now Mike Kay, executive director of Camp Hope, will talk with Susanna Nickens, a mom who is stepping out in faith to talk about Jesse's difficulties and his journey in an effort to help other parents. Thank you, Skip. I, I'm super excited to introduce you guys to uh, a person that's become a very good friend of mine. Um, she's a champion for young adults with mental health, and, and I, I'm just excited to tell you her, her story and what she's doing here in the ECMA. So this is my friend Susanna. Susanna, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. I know you're, you're a busy person, but I appreciate you fitting us in. Sure. So Susanna, just I know your background, but um, can you tell the viewers kind of you know what what you do for a living? I'm a teacher. Okay. Um, I've been teaching in the valley for about close to 20 years, working with uh, third, fourth, and fifth graders. Right now, wow. I teach a fourth and fifth grade loop, so I keep them for two years. Fourth and fifth grade. Yes. All right. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about today was uh, your son Jesse. Yeah. Right. And I got to meet your son, Jesse, uh, when we first opened Camp Hope, right? And, uh, you know, I still remember that night like it was yesterday. Him in his flip-flop shoes, shorts, mm -hmm. with that hair, right? Lots and, of hair. And the, and the tank top, heavily muscled, jumping our gate like it wasn't even there. <laughs> but he had such a good soul about him. Um, so can you kind of share with people, who is Jesse? So my husband, Willis, and I have three sons, and uh, Jesse was our youngest, and um, just a really easy, easy kid, very kind soul, like you said. Anybody who met Jesse or has known Jesse has known, like, he loved people, loved animals. He just really, really was a special person, and he just kind of was an overachiever. Like you said, he was extremely athletic. He was musical. You know, he just kind of went through life. Everything came easy to him, sports, school, friends. But he was always kind to everyone. He really, he really was. And whenever we would go somewhere at the time, if we would see panhandlers, we knew that we were going to have to pull over because he wasn't just going to go give somebody money or food. He was going to have a conversation. He <laughs> saw people for who they were. So um, about his senior year in high school, he just started to change, and we found out he was smoking marijuana. We really didn't know what to do because we had no background with addiction. Long story short, we found out he was suffering from mental illness. He had early onset bipolar disorder, and it was just so difficult for us because we had no experience with that, and as a family, we felt a lot of shame. That's one of the things I'm hoping that we can change because yeah. there's so much shame around it and there shouldn't be shame. Families right. should not feel that. I mean, you have this young man. He's super athletic, mm -hmm. super funny, yeah. very smart. Yeah. You're right. He could, see, he could see who people were, not their masks, so to Absolutely. speak, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so on. And he had just such a kind heart that had to be really devastating for him you know, to to get into a senior year to find out that he had that, that mental yeah. health disorder. So you said you, you guys felt shame. Can you kind of describe that, why that was? Well, we were still trying to figure out, like, what was going on. And is it addiction? Is it mental illness? And um, when we ended up losing Jesse, he... Um, 
ended up being hit by a car and lived for about four and a half weeks before he passed away. And we had so much support. He was actually at a hospital in Tri-Cities. And mm -hmm. so many people came and supported us through um, his friends, our friends, co-workers. And I think had we been honest about our situation and spoke to people about what we were experiencing with him, we probably would have had that support all along. Because there is not anybody in this valley whose family has not been touched That's by right. mental illness in some way. And we have to start talking about it because we we were embarrassed, especially, you know, I am an educated person. We're a two-parent household. You know, you kind of feel like right. we failed in some way, mm -hmm. that we failed our son. And I just, you know, that's just not the case. And Yeah, that's the thing that always frustrates me is you hear, well, why didn't the parents do more? Right. Especially when we're talking about young adults. Or Ooh. why didn't the school do more? Right. Or why didn't, you know, the courts do more or whatever? But what I know of our system is our system needs to be overhauled. Absolutely. Right, especially when it comes to young adults, Absolutely. because I think there are a lot of parents that say, "I don't want people to think that that's my kid's problem." Right, right. Um, and what I know is that it's generational Absolutely. stuff that goes on. I know in my conversations with Jesse, because he he didn't ever seem to sleep, <laughs> um, no. and you know at that time Camp Hope was just basically the the office was the front seat of my truck, right. so um, you know he would sit up and and tell me. The different programs he went to, what mm -hmm. worked, mm -hmm. what didn't work, what he liked, what he didn't like. And I mean, he was the type of young man that, I love these programs that say, well, they won't be able to leave. Yeah, he'd, he'd leave. He sure he did. He would climb the wall and be gone if he wanted to, and he was athletic enough, mm -hmm. so be it. So what programs, you don't have to name them, but oh. I mean, you got them like, you know, mental health help. You got yes. all kinds of stuff, right? Because I know you ran kind of the gamut looking for... We really yeah. did. And I think that's another thing that's frustrating because, you know, that's a skill set for, for parents mm -hmm. learning how to access those services. I was counting last night and I was thinking six different facilities. We were looking for mental health. We were looking for addiction. Although all we really ever found was marijuana. We were looking for... Um, places that were dual diagnosis, which for the most part, in most cases that we found, is just kind of a label to get you in the door, but they, don't, they aren't really getting that right. dual diagnosis. Um, he was everywhere from the west side of the state to California, to Florida, to um, Arizona. Um, six different places we tried. You know, we just, we really... And those aren't cheap programs. No, no. Right? I mean... No, even with insurance and Pat, in fact, um, he passed away in 2017, mm -hmm. and I'm still paying on loans I took out to try to get him help. Wow. Yeah. Well, I know in my conversations with Jesse, one of his big frustrations was there was never a place that he felt that he could get the services he needed mm -hmm. and not feel institutional, right? Mm -hmm. That was his big thing. So um, the other thing that I learned with Jesse is that he didn't like to be told what to do. True. Um, and he wanted to pick his care himself. Absolutely. Um, and it was one thing he taught me was it's always about the relationship. It's always about the respect and the dignity. Mm -hmm. So now... Um, you know, because of getting to know you mm -hmm. and your family and how hard you fought, and Jesse, <laughs> right? Um, and Jesse's own words, we've created a low barrier young adult shelter yes. called Jesse's Place, yes. right? Which is um, at Camp Hope. It's 12 young men beds, 12 young bed women. But what I love is Jesse's input was you got to make it feel like a college dorm room. <laughs> Right. 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 So that's exactly what we did. And you were instrumental with that. Uh, Lori and, and your whole group kind of rallied around. It was really yeah. cool to watch the community come together and agree that this is a, uh, something that needs to be addressed. Absolutely. And there's other providers that are addressing it in their own way, but I don't think there's anybody that's addressing it this way. So Jesse's place, a young adult comes in experiencing homelessness. And they can literally get mental health care, mm -hmm. 
medical care, case management, and get to stay in the dorm room, basically, where right. they pick their bedding. You guys right. did a great job raising a bunch of money. So these, these young people come in and they get to pick their bedroom set, whether it's the Seahawks, the Ravens, yes. purple, pink, <laughs> pink furry stuff, whatever it may be, they get to pick that. And that's their bed with their storage and your group raised money so that there's, they have dressers beside the bed and they have storage above the bed and underneath and they have TVs. And they're trying to convince me that they need karaoke machines in each room. <laughs> Not sure we're going there just yet. Um, but they can literally walk outside the door of their dorm room and walk to comprehensive mental health and be within yards right. of it, right? Why is Jesse's Place so important for you? Other than the obvious, of course. Oh, gosh. Well, I think the big thing, and you touched on it, was um, it's really tough for those 18 to 24-year-olds, especially when they're experiencing mental illness. They're not children, mm -hmm. but they're not really... They are adults, but they're not, they need some support. And he certainly didn't want support from us, um, but he knew he needed support. And you know, I didn't get to meet you until he passed away, but he found a place where he could get support. And I truly believe had he lived that he would have continued to work through your program and been a success story because he, he would have accepted that support from you where it would allow him to have some freedom from us. And I think it's a support for families too. Um, it's exhausting and draining and um, it's very difficult when you're dealing with a young adult with mental illness that is not well controlled. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's gotta be. Um, I can only imagine what you and your husband went through mm -hmm. trying to figure out where is he right. and so on. The really cool thing that I, I really think is that with the Jesse's Place, as we call it, we get to see young adults that have not been successful in foster care. Right. They've aged out of foster care. They don't have a ton of life skills. Um, they um, kind of get to be in community with one another. Mm -hmm. They get all those wraparound stuff we talked about, but they feel like they belong. Absolutely. That's the big thing that I remember in conversations with Jesse was the hat trick, according to him, was you got to make them feel like they belong because they do belong. Right. Right? And I, and I heard stories of his friends that went to facilities and so on and, mm -hmm. and you know, why Jesse ran away from one facility and climbed the wall of another <laughs> and, you know, locked the staff out of, <laughs> out of another facility and so on. But I get it because in the organizations that we looked at prior to opening Jesse's place, sometimes they get treated very institutional. Right. And for a young man like Jesse, that wasn't gonna happen. No. We were we were done at the minute that they, <laughs> they told him, you know, this is what you're gonna do. What I really love about what we're creating down there is these young people have a voice. Absolutely. And it reminds me of the conversations with Jesse in the front seat of my pickup. <laughs> You know, where he convinced me he wasn't hungry, but he ate the entire bag of McDonald's, <laughs> right? And was trying to convince me at that time the pirate's plunder was out there, that we should see if my truck can really jump these certain things and so on. But in those conversations, there were some real nuggets of wisdom there. Mm -hmm. And what I love is when we deal with these young people that come in, you know, I always hear Jesse's voice just a little bit of, you know, this is what we got to do. Even the ones that, like I was telling you earlier, the, some of my young men remind me a lot of Jesse because they think the sock is still wearable when it's stuck to the wall, right? Yeah, I've smelled um, it a few times. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter what we do for air freshener. It smells like a locker room. Yeah. Um, but what, what I love the most about these folks is that these young people feel like they're home. And I think that's kind of Jesse's spirit kind of radiating through there is they feel like they're home because some of the ones that we have have not been successful anywhere else. That, you know, and some of them remind me of Jesse. So, you know, as I told you, I, the one night where he was determined he was going to get kicked out and then decided he was going to run away and decided that he was going to make me chase him through the field. <laughs> well, I almost died of a heart attack, but that's a different show. <laughs> Um, you know, but him laughing over the fact that I was chasing him, mm -hmm. you know, and it's that you pursued me. Yeah. 
And so, you know, as, as we're kind of wrapping this thing up, is what I what I love with Jesse's place is that these young people feel like they belong. Absolutely. And you know, that's what God wants is they want everyone to feel like they belong. And I really kind of see Jesse's. You know, we have the plaque with his picture with the hair <laughs> right there at the door. And every time I see that, that little smirk <laughs> always made me nervous, right? <laughs> But I love the fact that people that never met Jesse read that little story and they find some inspiration from it. What I think is really cool with your story with Jesse too is even the young man that hit Jesse that night, mm -hmm. you guys have reached out to him, right? Absolutely, because he became part of a story that wasn't his. He doesn't have any culpability in what happened and mm -hmm. we just felt like we didn't want to him to carry that as a burden. So however, and he's a wonderful young man. He mm -hmm. um, is in his early 20s now. He was in high school when it happened and so he, um, we've kept contact with him and want to be a positive part of his life. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. I, I keep going back to, you know, the fact of the, the how you've taken this tragedy you know, that Jesse ultimately lost his life mm -hmm. in, a, in what I believe he was having a mental health crisis. Yeah. Uh -huh. And how the system failed. Yeah. Um, but what I love is how you've taken this tragedy, mm -hmm. and I couldn't imagine having to bury a child and mm -hmm. so on. The strength that you've shown is just absolutely inspirational. Thank you. Um, you know, and the, the fact that your family comes down to celebrate his birthday at Jesse's place <laughs> is really inspirational. Um, you know, the, the little things you guys do to honor him is really, really cool. And so with that, um, you, know, uh, you know, we have our yearly gala coming up, March yes. 12th. We're super excited about that. We're going to be sharing testimonials. We're going to be sharing about how Jesse's place has impacted some young people Great. in a very positive way. But we're really excited because we want to take it to the next level. You've been working really, really hard to advocate for young people's mental health, uh -huh. right? And exactly what you said, make it not a stigma and so on. And so uh, we're going to be um, given an award that night, right, mm -hmm. uh, called the Jesse Nickens Award for <sighs> Youth Advocacy um, for People with Mental Health. I love that. And we're super excited about that because... I want, I want to use, um, you've really kind of inspired us to not only let Jesse's Place be the starting point, but also how do we encourage others to make that mental health stuff not a stigma, mm -hmm. right? Um, because if it can happen with Jesse, it can happen with anybody. Absolutely. That young man was so inspirational, um, you know, to hear the stories about Jesse since we've opened Jesse's Place. <laughs> Right. I mean, I even had a city councilman coming down for a tour that uh, went to school with with Jesse's brother and knew Jesse, and so we went to go tour Jesse's place. He knew that he knew the story of Jesse and all this stuff. And I think that that with your hard work that you've done, um, youth mental health awareness is going to be much different going forward. I hope so. I know so. Um, I think the tragedy that you endured. And the memory of Jesse is not going to fall on deaf ears. Oh, thank you. I'm super excited about how far in a year mm -hmm. um, this has gone and how much further God's going to take it in another year. Yeah. Right? Um, because you've done such a great job, Susanna, with your message. And it's, it's got to be tough to deliver that message. But, you know, it's not falling on deaf ears. Yeah. Right? So there's... 14 young people down there right now that have a place to stay because you shared your story. Well, Jesse was a gift. I mean, we really try to operate. There's always something to be grateful for, and I'm just grateful and thankful to God that we had 21 years with him, mm -hmm. and he was he was a great kid. He was a tremendous kid. Um, the thing that I'm really super encouraged about is the fact of, of who we were able to get to the table to look at Jesse's place and then say, how do we make it better? Yeah. And I think that's really cool is we're going to have the opportunity for you to share that story okay. with other parents Great. so that they're not going to feel like it's a dirty secret. Right. 
And I think letting people know that sometimes it's okay to say the system is broke. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's okay to say that the system didn't work for my child, right? Because I know some parents that don't have the resources you and Willis have. Right. Right? I can only imagine what that would be. My daughter's mm -hmm. five, and I would move heaven and earth to, to make sure she gets whatever she needs. What I'm super excited is, is that we're going to get to acknowledge um, a, a group of people that I think have really are serious about identifying the mental health Great. stuff as you are. Great. And getting you connected with them. Awesome. So um, I'm super excited about Jesse's Place. I'm super excited about what it stands for. And I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to get to know your son, Jesse. He changed me those, those few weeks that we, were, we got to hang out and so forth. And really, um, I hope when you see Camp Hope and you see some stuff, you realize your son's fingerprint and your fingerprint's all over that. Well, it healed our heart. One of the blessings for us uh, meeting you after he passed was knowing those times when we were at home so worried about where he was, knowing that he was being loved and cared for. It healed our hearts. And, you know, I want to be a part of providing that for somebody else. Yeah, we're absolutely going to do that. So, Suzanne, I want to thank you for sharing your story of Jesse. Thank you. Thank you for coming on today. Um, again, uh, we encourage people to come down, take a look at Jesse's place, see what God's doing there with our young people and so forth, and, and continue to have Susanna and her family in prayer as they go forward um, in making sure that mental health is no longer a, a dirty secret, um, that we can have open conversations about it and so on. And so uh, we just want to thank Susanna again for coming on, and, and Skip, back to you. Thank you, Mike and Susanna, for sharing Jesse's story. May God continue to work through this ministry as they reach people with the gospel. Next are some egg hunts and Easter events for families to participate in. Yakima Parks and Recreation is hosting an egg hunt candy dash event on Saturday, April 16th. There'll be music, lots of eggs candy, and of course pictures with the Easter Bunny. Location is still to be determined. Hunts are broken up into age groups. Toddlers up to three years old, fee is five dollars. Starting time is noon. Four to six years old, the fee is $8, and starting time is 12.50 p.m. And for seven to 11 years old, the fee is $8, and starting time is 1.40 p.m. Check-in begins 15 minutes prior to your child's scheduled time. Pre-registration is required and can be done online or by calling 509-575-6022. Grab your basket and hop on over to their Easter egg hunt at Wixon Park in Sela on Saturday, April 16th. Children will be allowed to participate in the egg hunt according to their age group, which includes 11 to 15 year olds, 5 to 10 year olds, and for toddlers up to age 4. All aboard the Egg Press for a family friendly 30 minute train ride on Saturday, April 16th for a journey departing from Chehalis, Washington. Come hang out with the Easter Bunny, ride in the indoor or outdoor seating cars, and then afterwards the kids can join on a fun Easter egg hunt. Departure times to choose from are 11 a.m., 12.30 p.m., 2 p.m., and 3.30 p.m. Tickets go on sale March 16th. Visit the website or call 360-748-9593. Kids can search for eggs hidden throughout Crystal Mountain Resort in Enumclaw, Washington all day long. Some eggs will be filled with candy and others will be filled with prizes with a chance to find the golden egg and win a 22-23 Crystal Mountain season pass. So mark your calendars for this fun adventure on Sunday, April 17th. More information can be obtained by checking out crystalmountainresort.com or by calling 833-279-7895. Gather friends and family for a memorable Easter celebration. Yakima Bible Baptist is having a Sunday Easter service on April 17th at 10 a.m., followed by a spectacular egg hunt for the kiddos. For more information, call the church at 966-1912. Come sail away on this two-hour excursion aboard the Portland Spirit on Sunday, April 17th for a delicious buffet. There are three departures to choose from, 9.30 to 11.30 a.m., 2.30 to 4.30 p.m., 
and 7 to 9.30 p.m. All boarding occurs 30 minutes prior to departure from the Salmon Street Springs Dock in Portland. To secure reservations, visit PortlandSpirit.com or call 503-224-3900. The City of Sunnyside is hosting the Cottontail Trail Easter Egg Search on April 2 from 10 a.m. to noon at South Hill Park. You're welcome to hop along the trail, enjoying various games, activities, and music while collecting eggs with surprises inside. This event is free, and there'll be food available for purchase as well. This event is open to families with children up to age 12. Hippity hop to the waterfront for an Easter brunch on Lake Island. The Argosy Cruise boat departs Pier 54 in Seattle on Sunday, April 17th for a four-hour excursion. Families will enjoy a delicious brunch and kids will be treated to two Easter egg hunts, so kids will be sure to bring your own basket. For reservations and pricing, please visit the website. The City of Pasco will be putting on an Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 16th. More information is coming out on this exciting event. Please call 509-544-3080 for additional details. Time to spring into life with this cruise and enjoy a delicious brunch on Easter weekend. The cruise leaves Columbia Point Marina in Richland for a relaxing two-hour ride down the Columbia River. For pricing and reservations, please visit watertowinecruises.com. Come early with your Easter basket and get ready for an egg hunt in Leavenworth on Saturday, April 9th from 1 to 3 p.m. The event is geared for children ages 12 and under. If you find a golden egg, it's worth a special prize. There will be activities from 1 to 2.30 p.m. and the hunt starts at 2.30 sharp. The cost is free and reservation is required. So there you have it, a whole lot of things you can get out and do this season with the kids. Yes, Easter's among us and oh, what a celebration it is. With grateful hearts, we thank and praise our glorious Savior Jesus Christ for His sacrifice and His unconditional love that he would die such a brutal death so those who believe in him could reign with him forever and ever. Jesus said in John 11, 25 through 26, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The resurrection is an invitation to receive what Christ has prepared for you. The offer of eternal life is a gift that must be received. What have you done with your invitation. Thank you for watching and may God bless you and may God protect and keep America.